and we are live. So I'm just going to let Facebook catch up. Um, there's, as you know, there's always a delay between what's happening in Zoom and what's happening um, actually in real life. So I'm joined with Diane Brown from Diane Brown Coaching, dash Fitby. <laughs> I like the B logo a lot. I can't, I can't get rid of that. Uh, Diane is an exercise psychology coach and well-being life coach, and she helps people who want to be more active, feel motivated, and fit it into their busy lives. For those of you who've been here for a while, that you're going to know that resonates really strongly with what I do. Uh, when Diane and I have been speaking, we've come across so many areas of our interests that overlap. But then we've also got quite different expertise as well. So I really wanted to invite Diane in to talk to you a little bit more about the psychology side, which is that's where she is amazing. Um, so, yeah, this is Diane. Hello. <laughs> and thanks so much for inviting me. It's really nice to be on here. I'm just excited about having company. <laughs> I think I think, uh, you know, first day of lockdown doing a joint Zoom is exactly what I needed. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so. I'm going to start off with a question that I'm sure you get asked all the time. Why is it that we can have a really amazing plan and then we just don't follow through? Why is it that our good intentions often just fail to translate into any meaningful action? Yeah, OK, so good question. So the first thing to say about this is it is extremely common and it is completely normal because often what happens when we have these good intentions and we don't manage to follow through is we can feel quite bad about it and beat ourselves up. And so it's really important to know that it's a really natural, normal thing. And if anything, it's probably more normal than being a person that just gets on with it really easily without any problem. That's good. So, <laughs> so hopefully that's reassuring. And just to um, try and explain a little bit about why that is. So when you're setting up, say, some kind of fitness plan, some kind of fitness goal, you're trying to make a change. You're trying to make a change to how you've done things before. And we don't really like change. So some of us think we do, but instinctively, it's not something we really like. And our minds will resist it. They'll resist it because our minds want to protect us. They want to keep us safe. And what keeps them safe is doing the same thing we've always done, that they know how that works and they know what happens. When we try to make ourselves do something different, there's a primitive part of our brain that goes, hang on a minute, what's all this about? Why are you wanting to go off jogging down the street when you could be staying nice and safe and warm? And, this is new. Um, we don't trust new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure lots of people have had that flash through their minds. Like, why am I going outside in the cold and rain? And, it, you know, if you think back to sort of, um, you know, prehistoric times and things, and you wouldn't, would you? You'd stay in your cave with your warm fire. You wouldn't go out in the cold and wet deliberately. So actually rather than beat ourselves up about it, we can recognize that that is a natural instinctive thing that's built in there. And in terms of exercise psychology, this thing where we have an intention, we set our good intentions and we don't manage to follow through, it's so common, there's a term for it and it's called the intention action gap. And it is literally the gap between setting an intention and following through with the action. So it's actually been quite well studied and well, well understood. I feel this because <laughs> I'm sure um, I mean I'm sure so many of us I mean I particularly this this last week coming into lockdown so I don't know where you guys are in the world where you are in the UK even because obviously we've got massively different um, <laughs> uh, sorry Frankie who's uh, one of our uh, members of the group is just a caveman brain is my favorite Yes, Frankie, love <laughs> caveman brain. Um, <laughs> you blame him for a lot. <laughs> yeah, so much, so much. Um, but so many of us are finding ourselves in quite a lot of uncertainty. So I'm in Kirklees. I'm in one of the areas that's been in a local lockdown. Then we're tier two. Then we're going to be tier three on Monday. And they're like, no, you're not tier three on Monday because it's a national lockdown. And there's been quite a lot of, you know, mental load around that. And I'm, I personally have just flatlined in terms of my level of energy. So I've I've been struggling with motivation and I'm sh I know I'm not alone because I've seen it in my clients, people I'm speaking to, everything. So is there anything we can do to help ourselves feel more motivated? Obviously, extenuating circumstances just now, but let's face it, motivation is never off any fitness, wellness, psychology, exercise person's coach's mind. Mm, yeah. How yeah. can we feel more motivated? Yeah. OK, so motivation is a really 
big area and there's actually quite a lot we can do with motivation I think is the really good news um, when I went and um, studied my sport and exercise psychology I went and did um, a postgraduate certificate at Leeds Beckett University fairly recently to do this and the reason I did it is because I really wanted to understand the science and the research that's been done around this to see if there was you know evidence-based research to to back up how we could make ourselves more motivated and I was kind of going hoping there might be something and what I found was quite a lot. So I was quite pleased and quite surprised. So I wouldn't have time, obviously, today to go through everything because it's a big area, but I can just touch on, on a few things. Um, motivation actually runs on a scale. So there is um, extrinsic motivation, which is when you're being motivated by quite external forces through to intrinsic motivation where it's really coming from inside and it's really you that wants to do it and when, what the studies have shown is that when we have intrinsic motivation to do something so if I put this in exercise terms you know I really want to go out for walk just for myself I don't care what anybody else thinks it's just for me and it's going to make me feel good and we have that intrinsic motivation to do that that makes us much more likely to do it and much more likely to keep it going long term. Whereas someone extrinsically motivated, and this is where I will bring in, apologies for this Shona with you being a personal trainer, but I will bring this in, something like um, a personal trainer or a fitness class or something like that. If you're using that in a way that you want that person to make you do it, that is extrinsic motivation because you're not doing it for yourself. You, you're, you're trying to use an, an external force to, to make you follow it. And that's the difference. So there's a whole load of work you can do around what's motivating you, but also understanding your motivation as well, because, um, you know, you might be sat there thinking, oh, well, I always need somebody to make me do it. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. Well, how far have you explored your real reasons to want to get fit and healthy and what it means for you and your life? And what I do with my clients is we go through a process of understanding more deeply what it means to them and what it means to them personally. And that helps you tune in more to your intrinsic motivation and the things that are going to help you keep it going through the tougher times and not just that, you know, somebody else is, is asking you to do it. That is really interesting and I love I love the kind of the, the shout out about personal trainers because I know so many of you that is why you come to me initially and I, I was speaking to Diane just before this, <laughs> uh, this session actually um, about kind of what that means because I it sounds ridiculous but I almost don't identify as a personal trainer a lot of the time but sometimes I do in very arbitrary ways and I don't feel like I fit the personal trainer mold mm. and I we were talking about the fact that I do want my clients to kind of outgrow me and do things for themselves yeah, yeah. for it to become an intrinsic thing and yeah. some of you might have noticed that the first few sessions I do with you if you've not signed up yet ignore the bit I'm going to say after this but the first <laughs> few sessions we do are all about feeling good and making it somewhere that you're really motivated to come along to so you're not coming along because I'm there you're coming along because it feels really good for you then we might up the ante a little bit later on but you know shh, no one needs to know um <laughs> So yeah, that's that's really interesting. I really like the distinction. Um, I'm gonna just throw in a curveball. <laughs> um, so there's um there's this really interesting kind of um, framework. It's called the Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. I don't know if you've come across it before. Uh, no. So basically, it looks into how how you're motivated to do things and stick to your plans. And there's four different kinds. So you're either you pay attention to internal and external, you pay attention to internal, you pay attention to external and you pay attention to neither. The neither are the rebels and there are a few rebels in this group, which I find quite entertaining. You know who you are and I bet you're smiling about this. <laughs> um, I very much fit into being an obliger. So when I've gone through this process, I am far more motivated by external um, by external things. So I'm more likely to turn up on behalf of someone else than myself, which is quite interesting. I, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. I'm going to send you this so you can look at it anyway. I have, I have. any thoughts just with that summary? It's, it's interesting. And um, yeah, it sounds like a model that's, you know, useful for, you know, putting some structure and helping people understand where, where they feel they sit mm -hmm. in terms of the motivation. But one thing I, I will say that I picked up on there is, 
we can have a tendency with these things to put ourselves in boxes and feel like that's where we belong and that's where we have to stay but actually our mind is very capable of shifting and shifting our perception mm -hmm. and sometimes we're sat in a box and we continue to sit in a box because we're reinforcing our own beliefs about ourselves yep. but there are ways that you can shift your perceptions and even for you Shona that you know you say you you feel like you're quite externally motivated and yeah I totally take your word for that um but I I suspect that if we had a little dig down and I really questioned you about it we, we would find intrinsic motivation in there it may just be that that's not top of your mind so much yeah. and you're seeing more of the the external motivation quite, side quite possibly and I find that really reassuring because I definitely I'm, I'm sure the folk in my group and in your group will be on the same page that I want to be better at showing up for me I want to be better at showing up on my own behalf and doing stuff for me so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some digging and find out in fact that no it is actually for me which I know is a big reframe that I work on with a lot of my clients. So that's, uh, I like yeah. that. Sorry for throwing a new model at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but always, I mean, I think, obviously I use models for a lot of different things. And I will always say that the, the map is not the territory. The model can help us put things into words and articulate it. But yeah, as Diane yeah. said, yeah. we're quite flexible. It's a good way of putting it into boxes, but it's how we use it that matters, I guess. And I think, yeah. yeah. I you think see where we're starting from is what yeah, it is seeing absolutely. where we're starting from and then we get to choose where we want to go yeah it's a it's a tool as opposed to an identity mm -hmm. but yeah when i read the obliger one i was like oh i do do that quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> i guess i i want to finish because obviously we've covered a reasonable amount and a, a a couple of tangents and the introduction of a brand new model that you've never heard of <laughs> Feel free to pay me back when I'm live in your group with that one. <laughs> I um, will. <laughs> but what, <laughs> what top tip would you give anyone who wants to get moving more but feels stuck? What's okay. your one top tip? So my, my top thing would be to start really, really small. So um, there's quite, you know, we all have our own ideas in our minds about what exercise is and what we think we should do. And I hate the word should, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> I actually, I, yeah, should is one of my like, yeah. <laughs> um, and what happens, and we're, we're kind of our own worst enemies, we set ourselves up and, and the more the more we want to push ourselves, the worse this gets in a way, because we set ourselves up of, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, let's say it's a 30 minute run or something. Maybe we used to be able to run for an hour and now we, you know, 30 minutes is a challenge so we think well 30 minutes is less than an hour so that I'll do that but actually if it's ages since we've really done any exercise we don't have to run 30 minutes we don't have to run 20 minutes we don't have to run you know we can go for a 10 minute walk we can go for a five minute walk in terms of exercise psychology it's about building the habits and the routines to start seeing yourself as the sort of person that wants to get out and do some exercise and you can begin to do that with really really small activities um, because once you're out doing something you might have a few days or a few weeks where you're quite happy just doing something really short and easy but once you get accustomed to that you will feel like oh I could just go a bit further because it'll feel more normal and it'll you know it won't feel so hard we don't have to make it hard why do we have to make it hard all the time we can start really easy even you know choose something you think is quite easy and then half it and then make that your plan and you will find it much less likely that you'll resist it because it's not such a difficult thing you're trying to make yourself do anymore but in the long term it's helped get you started towards building up I love this more than you can imagine. I do, <laughs> I give people two minutes worth of stuff to do sometimes. I'm like, this is two minutes, do this. Yeah. This is all you need to do. Just get into the habit of doing that. Um, my kind of, my top tip, if I don't want to train, I just roll around to the floor. I'm just oh, like, I'm going to start I'm like, <laughs> so really nice sequence is where you start, you've got everything stretched out and you just roll to the side, curling in, and then you come back and you come out. And it just, we don't stretch out this way very often. And you just go side to side and you can just add things to it. You can straighten a leg, you can straighten an arm. And more often I might than do not, that later. I'm not rolled about on the floor for ages. <laughs> honestly, I I spend a weird amount of time rolling around the floor for a grown-up. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, but yeah, honestly, yeah, I totally have that as well. And I know that 
there'll be some of you who are watching this who probably think I'm talking about you and I, I am a little bit but it's with love <laughs> but I know so many of us are like I should be doing this that and the next thing and I need to do this that and the next thing I mean if we want like identity crisis I'm as well as running cherry tree I work with Neola Willby who wrote the book on strength and conditioning for pole dancers and I've not touched the pole in over two weeks <laughs> but sometimes things just have to wait and we've got to start small and we've got to do things that feel good and we've got to make it super duper uber easy you and know? I think it's also sorry just to add in it's also recognizing that doing the small thing is a big deal and not to minimize it and because we do this this is a terrible habit we sometimes have as well we sort of minimize oh you know I only went for a walk or I just went out for five minutes and we're minimizing it but it's a big deal that we've managed to make ourselves do it yeah. and get out there and we need to recognize that celebrate it without caveats you've still yeah. showed up you've still done it and actually I, I don't know about you Diane but I do work with people a lot on setting goals and some of the goals I give people are just show up yeah. show up to give yourself the option to do whatever so I have a habit tracker on my phone and all I have to do is say that I moved like yeah it's, I don't give myself any specifications about what that is it's just show up and do something and I think showing up especially at the moment when so many of us are uh, fatigued <laughs> shall yeah. we say and don't necessarily have our normal options available to us yeah I yeah. think making it easy means we're far more likely to succeed um and I guess this is a really nice segue into, so Diane has had a really exciting thing happen over in her business and I want to hand over and just let her tell us all about um, her new programme. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I've just launched it this week, so it's quite exciting. So it's my Active Wellbeing Starter Course and it's, it's all online and you follow it at your own pace. I'm very much a go at your own pace kind of person anyway and it's the same with the course and it's uh, five 30 minute sessions that helps you build your own active well-being plan so we look at motivation we look at um, time finding time that you might not feel that you have but have ways of helping you find it um, and we look at enjoyment because I'm you know all about what we're doing to move our bodies should be about enjoyment it's not about punishment it's about enjoying ourselves and we go through all those stages and bring it together um, so you end up with your own active well-being plan, which is, is essentially a, an activity plan slash fitness plan for the week. But the important thing about it is that you've built it around your own motivations, your own time available, your own likes and dislikes, your, your own needs, essentially. So it's designed to fit around you. Um, and it is done from the principle of we need to start easy and then we can build up from there. Um, so, yeah, so I've, I've just launched that this week. It's uh, £27. If anybody's interested, I can pop a link in the comments. The <laughs> I'll put in a link as a separate course. So I'm sitting here thinking, I need this right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Enjoy definitely. It. Enjoy it. I, I actually, I'm going to, as soon as we're off this call, I'm going to get you to send me the link so I can sign up. I will. Brilliant. And it's... Um, and it's in it's in a Facebook group and that's deliberate because I want to be on hand if people have questions as they're going through it as well. So although it's online and you could just do it standalone by yourself with no intervention, if you wanted, I am on hand in the Facebook group. So as you're going through it, if you've got questions and things, you can jump in there and ask questions. That is just amazing. And for anyone who's listening, um, I'm sure you're picking out the same threads and similarities that Di Diane and I have seen. Um, I, I have a feeling we're very much carbon copies in the amount that we want to hear. <laughs> it's a little bit scary. Yeah. yeah, I think we're like, the Venn diagram of interests is this, and the Venn diagram <laughs> of specialities is this. Yeah. So I think yeah. it works really nicely. But yeah, so Diane is just awesome. I'm, I'm definitely going to come and check that out because, you know, I... And I will say this again, I mean, some of you are on the Facebook page, you'll have seen the Imperfect PT project that I'm doing on my Instagram, which I've not posted on for a few days because really imperfect. Um, but that's all about the fact that I have this, I have technical knowledge, I've got skills, I've got experience doing this. Doesn't mean it always works. Doesn't mean I don't also want to reach out and get a hand sometimes. And I think, Diane, uh, that course of yours, I think is going to become recommended, if not mandatory reading, for every one of my clients. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah, so that, well, they're very welcome. That is amazing. And I know that I am really excited about this because everything Diana said, I'm like, I agree. This is amazing. <laughs> um, 
but I would love to hear your comments, your questions, anything. So if you're catching the replay, I should have said this at the beginning, so sorry anyone who is catching the replay. If you are catching the replay, let us know. Diane is in the Facebook group. Um, she's going to be tagged in any posts about this. So pop in a comment and we'll be more than happy to help out, signpost you to things. And um, just really let's let's get moving and let's keep moving, kind of no matter what the rest of this year and next year throws at us, I think. But easily and without the word should. <laughs> without the word should, ban that word. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing thank you so much diane um i don't think there is thank I'm you. Give You're everyone welcome. a little minute so um i think because of the time of day most of the folk in this group are away off doing their proper jobs How rude. yes probably <laughs> um but as any questions come in and i am going to be shouting about this because i have loved listening to your perspective and all this it's stuff that i think about a lot and it's really nice to have an expert in it come in and join me um so thank you so much <laughs> and we'll be back in january so Diane will be coming to visit us again in January. Um, so send us questions, comments, anything. Yeah, pile them up. <laughs> yeah, please. I'll have to bring back uh, WTF Wednesdays just for that. <laughs> so I can collect <laughs> yeah. your questions. Um, but yeah, lovely to have you here, Diane. And uh, yeah, let's let I'll let you get back on with your day. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you all later. Bye.